I think I might be in the super minority on this one, but I really just don't give a single fuck about this Ghislaine Maxwell trial. I really don't. It's like, how? okay, listen, everything that's being accused here is really despicable, and it really fucking disturbs me directly to my core, but the only thing is, how the fuck do you prove any of this shit? Okay, like, like, what the fuck is actually going to be found out here? Like, yesterday you had opening statements. It's like, oh, she was a partner in crime of Jeffrey Epstein. It's like, oh, okay. And then the defense says, no, she's just being used as a scapegoat. And it's like, all right, okay. And again, the only thing that we're getting out of it is a an audio feed that you can't rebroadcast in any sort of way. All you can do is just write notes on it. Or you can be directly at the courthouse and you can, I don't know, report on what you see from there. And there's only a limited amount of space from there. So you got to rely on third-party outlets to rebroadcast everything and it's like i just don't fucking care so again it's big news so you got to kind of talk about it if you're in this sphere i suppose but kind of like the ahmaud arbery stuff it's like there's other shit that i'd rather talk about that actually has substance because at the end of the day this basically just boils down to hey guess what you know, people who are really powerful and people who have a lot of pull in society are probably creeps okay and they might be pedophiles whoop de fucking do okay this is shit that we've already known for a, a long fucking time like you're gonna have inflammatory content or comments like this. This is Jane, remember? Uh, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell's first accuser, Jane, said Epstein made her straddle his face and pinch, her, pinch his nipples when she was 14 years old. It's like, okay, that's pretty fucking disturbing and awfully disgusting. But how do you prove any of this shit? Okay, you gotta take her testimony. And we can't see what's going on inside the courtroom, so we don't know if she's all shifty, squirmy, and all that kind of shit that you can kind of tell if any of the testimony is gonna be accurate and fair. All we're doing is going off of just first-hand accounts of people just writing furiously down on notepads and then just the little wall or watercolor paintings that come out afterwards. <sighs> so, again, ah, fucking who gives a shit? So it's like, I always like to go off of, like, evidence and some hard facts but it's like okay what can she do it's like my hymen was intact in 93 but in 94 it's no longer it's like I'm, this is so long ago it doesn't make it any less atrocious if it did happen but how do you prove it it's, oh whatever whatever Ghislaine Maxwell's first accuser, known as Jane, has taken the stand to testify uh, that she was 14 years old when she first had sexual contact with Jeffrey Epstein. So, okay, so according to the prosecution, uh, Maxwell was integral in uh, acquiring the girls for the island. That's what's being alleged, okay? And obviously, this is going to be a long fucking trial, so eventually we might get some sort of input as to how that happened. But as we know right now, that was her role in this entire thing, and there's connections out there, and we got, oh, testimony from the pilot, but first and foremost, we got what Jane had to say. So in bombshell testimony Tuesday afternoon, and again, that's another reason why I hate this because all of this fucking inflammatory shit that's out there. Oh, it's a bombshell testimony. No, let the words speak for themselves. You don't have to fucking color it any direction. If it's actually bombshell, it'll read like it. You don't have to set it up like that. But the woman using pseudonym Jane, because apparently somebody who's been in custody for the better part of a fucking year and has been woken up every 15 minutes to make sure that they don't Epstein themselves, um, you know, she's gonna hurt them or something it's whatever again and and then the tertiary lawsuits that come out after this like how many of those have actually uh, borne any fruit it's I, I don't really care a lot about this shit but we'll see what's going on I was in the room during the alleged abuse, wearing a gray cap, a round sweater, a black dress, a black boot. She pushed back her jet black hair and told her ma er, and took off her mask and told the judge, fuck off, just get to what the fuck they had to say. She detailed how Epstein had her straddle his face, pinch his nipples, and said the first sexual encounter took place in 94 when he took her into the pool house and proceeded to masturbate on me. Weird. Uh, Jane said Epstein was talking about, uh, what I wanted to do with her life and said that, uh, she had to choose between being an opera singer or an actress or a model. She said, I said, I know everybody, I know agents, photographers, I can make those things happen, uh, but you have to be ready for it. The conversation ended abruptly. We went into his office and he said, follow me. They went outside to the pool house and Epstein sat on the couch, right hand side. 
pulled down his pants, uh, he pulled me on top of himself and proceeded to masturbate on me while straddled on his face. Like, that'd be tough. Um, they went outside to the pool house and Epstein sat on the couch. Oh, I'm sorry. Read that again. Um, again, this is all just um, really disgusting shit, but how do you prove any of it? Oh, then he just got up and went to the bathroom and cleaned himself and it acted as if nothing had happened. That's normally what you do when you're in shame, I guess. Uh, I was frozen in fear. I'd never seen a penis before, let alone something like this. I was terrified and I felt gross. I felt ashamed. Yeah, it's a casting couch. We, You know, you got it. But again, yeah, she's 14 and all this shit does suck. Despite this, she continued spending time with Epstein and Maxwell. And shortly after, uh, she had the first sexual encounter with Maxwell. All right, so now we're actually getting to stuff involving the person who's on trial. Epstein said Maxwell oh Epstein and Maxwell were take or er, talking when all of a sudden they followed me and led her to Epstein's bedroom in the Palm Beach home they came into the bedroom and took their clothes off they started Oh, they started sort of fondling each other and kind of casually giggling. There's a lot of details, so perhaps this happened, but how were we ever going to know? I was just standing there, and he asked me to take off my top, and then their hands were everywhere. Jeffrey proceeded to masturbate, and Ghislaine was rubbing him and kissing him and fondling. Cool, fine, whatever. You can read the rest of this, because it just gets into, yeah, they were doing some more fucking creepy stuff with a, the fucking... 14 year old kid and this shit was going on since what the 90s all the way through the 2000s so what else we have today because uh court might have wrapped up by the time that i'm done recording this so we got new york posts live coverage on this and then once we get to the pilot's testimony the guys who you know he wrote the flight logs that have been out there for like over a year or in change he verified that yeah he wrote them and the people that he wrote down on the flight logs were on the plane so wow bombshell testimony but yeah, something else that he said, Jeffrey Epstein's longtime pilot, Lawrence Paul Vikovsky Jr. said under cross-examination that he never witnessed any sexual acts or underage girls without their parents aboard several private aircrafts that he piloted for the multi-millionaire pedophile. Okay, well, you're, uh, also he was never, well, was he convicted? I don't know if he was. I don't really care either way. Jeffrey Epstein is a fucking creep and that's been long established. I never saw any sexual activity. No, uh, er, vi oh, Vizovsky, whatever, told defense attorney Christian Everdell, who quizzed the pilot on the stand about the thousand or so flights he piloted from early 90s to 2004. Vizovsky said he did not notice any underage girls without their parents on the plane. But again, he certainly remembers certain people that were on the or were on those planes, though. That include both Epstein accuser Virginia Roberts and a victim identified as Jane at the trial. All right, so Vizovsky said he flew Roberts in the mid to late 90s, but believed her to be a shorter woman with dirty blonde hair. He added that he believed an Epstein associate named Jane that he met on one of the planes was a mature woman with some piercing powder blue eyes. Prosecutors entered both a birth certificate for Jane into evidence under seal. Must have other pending litigation, or maybe that was a agreement made between the prosecution and her being called that she heard that her identity would be kept anonymous. Bill Clinton, among those names, uh, dropped in testimony. Yeah, people that were multiple or that were on flight logs. Okay, various different flights, not necessarily to the island or not, but Clinton's name was on those as well as other people's as well. But we'll get back to that because I got a different article for that. Jeffrey Epstein's gift giving. Maxwell's defense attorney Christian Everdell, during cross examination of Epstein's former pilot, asked about gifts the sex fiend bestowed upon his longtime employee. Vyskovsky, who worked for Epstein for close to 30 years, received a number of pricey gifts throughout his employment, including 40 acres and a mule. Oh no, uh, just of land on the pedophiles, a new. Uh, a New Mexico ranch for him to build a house. The financier even paid for Vysovsky's two daughters. Oh, I'd be a little bit uh, leery about that. Uh, private high school education. The pilot testified, yes, he believed in higher education. Yes, because they're easier to manipulate. And then they broke for lunch, I guess. I don't really know. So he was back on the stand after lunch. Um, then he testified he never had any inkling that his boss or Maxwell were allegedly abusing young girls. Isn't this guy supposed to be a witness for the prosecution? Because that's normally how this shit goes. So um, that seems a little bit damning to their case. And I'm not saying that these people aren't fucking creeps. I'm just saying, what the fuck are you going to find out? 
from this anyways. I would have quit my job, he said. Well, again, if you're getting sweet gifts like 40 fucking acres and you're getting a free college for your kids, but whatever. First accuser takes a stand. Yeah, Jane, we went through all of her stuff. So let's go and uh, dive a little bit deeper into what the pilot had to say. I certainly remember Trump. <gasps> oh my God. And you certainly also remember that there were no unaccompanied minors on any of the flights that you uh, <laughs> provided Epstein. I'm like, what? All right, a uh, Lolita Express pilot, and he also piloted many other flights that didn't involve that plane, because I think that was one specific plane. There were multiple private jets, so nice conflagration of the facts here, but whatever. A uh, Lolita Express, Express pilot says he remembers Donald flying with Epstein on his private jet during testimony at uh, the Maxwell sex trafficking trial, as well as, as you can see there, he also described having Prince Andrew, Kevin Spacey, Bill Clinton on board the private jet. So again, once, you know, Orange Man gets clicks, ergo, he's in the the fucking headline a uh, pilot for epstein's pedophile private jet the lolita express and multiple other private jets has uh testified about former president donald trump being among the passengers on some of his flights all right um claim he claimed under oath tuesday while testifying at sex trafficking trial of the right hand woman oh no she's just the scapegoat according to the defense i hope every i hope the courtroom just self-emulates and we all can just fucking move on from this situation and depends on how long it goes maybe the clintons are just placing some calls right now he had been asked uh, by prosecutors to describe his experience and listed uh, the famous passengers he's flown saying i certainly remember president trump but not many people associated with him oh okay uh, uh, others who Vysovsky said had flown included Bill Clinton, actor Kevin Spacey, and Prince Andrew. Yeah, again, no real revelations here. These were all the people that were on the flight logs, which he would have had to write in order to. So, yeah. <laughs> Again, what the fuck are we finding out here? Other than the guy who wrote shit down reinforces that he wrote that down? Cool. Vyskovsky added uh, that he was asked to clean up after Clinton's flight. You, no shit. Uh, but did not elaborate and assisted that he never saw any sexual activity on the plane. Uh, Trump and Epstein knew each other in the 90s, and then they definitely had a very public falling out. The relationship soured when Epstein hit on a young girl at Mar-a-Lago. Again, just proving that, once again, a Trump has a long established track record of knowing when people suck and getting rid of them when he has the opportunity. Uh, Trump's a Palm Beach club in the early 2000s before Epstein was convicted of soliciting child prostitution. Huh, imagine that. Yeah, and again, that's another page of that um, transcript that's been out there for fucking ever, right? And that's also the one that Linwood pointed to. You remember Linwood, he's crazy. He's like, oh, John Roberts is on there and therefore I'm gonna replace him as Chief Justice because I'm a fucking nut job. Uh, they were still on good terms in 2002 when Trump gushed in an interview with New York Magazine. I've known Jeff for 15 years. Terrific guy. Yeah, and if he just took the fucking private jet, according to the pilot, never saw any sexual activity there. So, you know what? I, cool. Uh, he's a lot of fun to be with. It is even said that he likes beautiful women as much as I do, and many of them are on the younger side, no doubt about it. Jeffrey enjoys his social life. Weird. Uh, no, oh, Trump was in office when Jeffrey Epstein killed himself. Sure. In prison in summer of 2019, afterwards, Trump fueled widespread conspiracy theories that suggested Epstein had been murdered. Well, you know, there's things like, I don't know, the medical examiner's records and him being on the, the record saying certain things. But hey, what, you know, you know, was it suicide? Was he killed? Are there a lot of strange circumstances surrounding that situation? Oh, I don't know, maybe, perhaps. Now, that right there is the one thing surrounding this trial, or at least overshadowing this trial, that if it would have happened at the time when I had this channel open, I would have definitely been talking about it, because that was fucking weird, but... Again, okay, so what did this guy see? Uh, I don't know, the inside of the cockpit? That was about it. And uh, what did he testify to? Shit that he wrote down 20 years ago? He was like, yeah, that was me, so... And again, uh, uh, Jane making some fucking spicy claims that can't really be backed up by evidence other than the testimony of a mentally distraught at the time 14 to 16-year-old girl. Okay, I don't know what the fuck we're gonna find, but it looks like day one of the actual trial because yesterday was opening test or opening statements by the prosecution and the defense so 
I don't know. You guys seem to really want some kind of commentary or some kind of coverage on this. I just uh, don't find it that terribly fucking interesting. So might dive in uh, a couple more times because this case is going to be going on for a while and it seems to be circulating in the headlines. So I guess I'm kind of obligated to talk about it, but I don't really find very much substance to this. I think all the people involved in this fucking suck at different levels. So if there was just a roof collapse in the courtroom, I think we'd all be better off because of it. Lawyers included. With that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.